My name is Jeff Flack. I'm with the Texas State Aquarium. I'm the IT manager here. We, we're located on, uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas on the Gulf Coast, and we are right on Corpus Christi Bay. Uh, during the uh, storm, uh, such as Harvey, where we are right on the Gulf Coast, uh, concern is flooding, and we are literally right on the water. And we have some exhibits that are outside that contain uh, certain animals that we can't leave them outside. If the water rises above their exhibit and enclosure, they can uh, get flooded or washed somewhere else. So every animal, uh, we can bring them into our facility, inside the facility, and do a safe location. And part of our disaster recovery plan includes having the ability and to do that and then the appropriate people on staff to handle the animals. So there's a, a big uh, number, large number of people here that stay during these storms. When the storm hit, I was here for about, it been about a year since I'd been at the aquarium. And when we began our disaster recovery planning, so my job was to kind of realize what they needed and then get all the stuff that they didn't know that they needed and make sure that was up and included in the plan as well. There is a, a power outage for an extended period of time. Um, things are on battery backup, so they will remain on and then get switched over to a generator, uh, a gas, a diesel powered or natural gas powered generator that provides power to the entire facility or certain locations of the facility uh, that need that power in an emergency. So establishing your your tools of communication is really important. And if your phones aren't working, the phone lines are down, um, what, what do you fall back on? Um, everybody has their cell phones. Cell phones are really prominent these days, but there's a lot of issues with cell technology during a disaster, during an earthquake with down lines or down cell towers. If you're creating a, a disaster recovery plan with an emergency operations center communications, you would wanna have at least uh, also a satellite telephone. And once you have your power and your phone system, and then the internet. Um, the internet is another key piece of information that you can use to find out what's going on in, in the world, what's happening in your location, and what's happening with the storm. Luckily, our uh, provider, everything was underground here. And uh, I said, as long as everything's underground from the provider and stays up, our systems, based on all the running around that I did for the past year, all the rooms where all the equipment connects together and getting everything on a battery backup and moved over to a generator powered outlet, we should be good. After every um, disaster, even after every test that you do, a disaster recovery test, there's a lessons learned piece of what, what didn't go right because you can't plan a disaster. They just happen. One of the big things that I'm, I'm working on, after, worked on after disaster is it's an equipment list, an essential equipment list, and a non-essential equipment list. And then identifying out of that essential equipment, where could I pull from other areas of the aquarium if it was needed um, to replace a, a failed piece of equipment. I've spent, um, part of the aquarium, I spent 13 years in the financial industry, in IT and financial industry. And at some point I just decided that uh, it's my goals in life and, and we're more geared towards the conservation effort that institutions such as its Texas State Aquarium were doing. Uh, so I decided to make the switch when the opening uh, came about here and uh, really feel that it, being able to use my skills uh, in support of conservation and uh, wildlife uh, is it's much more fulfilling for me. It's, it's a very it's a very odd story. <laughs> how I got into, you know, computer systems. Uh, so I was, um, I was in school for accounting and I needed, uh, I had a computer and I needed more hard drive space for some of my applications for school. So I bought a hard drive and read the instructions on how to install it in the computer and did that. And then a couple of months later, I needed to, I was working nights at a, at a, <clears throat> at a at actually SeaWorld of Ohio, <laughs> so, uh, doing security there, while, night security while I was in school. And uh, finally, I just, I, I couldn't do the, you know, all night long and, and most of the days I was getting too tired. Uh, so they had a position open at the local Best Buy and it was just to come in and, and basically start cleaning, buffing the floors at like 4 a.m. 
that's fine. It's a lot closer and a lot easier. So uh, I went in for a, an interview and uh, and they said, well, you have some computer experience on on your you know, your application. I said, yeah, like, well, we think you might fit better in the, the computer help desk area. They just want to ask you a couple of questions. And the only questions they asked me were replay, how do you replace a hard drive, which is the only thing I knew about computers, how to do it. And because uh, I did it a couple of months ago. <laughs> and then they said, okay, you're hired. And, I was, and the second day I started at the help desk there, um, the two guys that worked there quit. So it was just me. I knew nothing about computers at all. Uh, and people started bringing me computers to fix. <laughs> I had to, and I decided to, you know, stick with it and make something of it and learn, you know, here I am 20 something years later, <laughs> uh, doing network architecture, design and disaster recovery and all this other stuff. So that's how I got into information systems. Yeah. <laughs>